uh, so what we're going to cover today, again, as an underwriter, so let's go back in. We are in November, or this time last year, we got this deal, Horizon San Antonio. So we're going to make some assumption. And that assumptions that we made last year to purchase I and mean, to, to buy this deal. And then we're going to show you all the good things, all the works that uh, have been completed. Then we're going to show you uh, what the works are remaining for 2024. And then we'll show the other thing, all the punches we had YTD as of now, and then how we have optimized and navigating through the process, both on the asset management side and the LP side and the GP side. So we'll cover all this crowd. So stay with me and drop it and drop all the questions you may have, and then we'll cover at the end of the um, session and happy to take on uh, you know, all the questions as I go through. All right. I was there. So this is the uh, team. So I was there uh, two weeks, a week and a half ago. Uh, it's me and uh, behind me, we have Joseph. He is our CapEx crew, that a second CapEx crew uh, to make the unit, I mean, the units ready. We have a big amount of units who we'll make them ready. We had a secondary team from Houston. He's a home builder from Houston. He took his eight people team, him and Joey, his brother and the team. And Joey and Joe as well. Joe, this gentleman is the property manager uh, up until yesterday. We let him go today. And he was there, he has done a good job, uh, but we let him go today. We'll bring a new person in and I'll walk you through why we have done it. So uh, stay with us, it's fun. So the summary, so let's let's go back. The assumption that we made to buy this asset. So on the left-hand side, you can see, we believe the asset, the price that we had, it's a very good price came in. Also the loan that we have, it's a very good loan. As you know, from the massive side, we do not like paying low interest rate. That's because you're too far away from the market. That means you have to do extra work just to catch up on the interest rate payment when you sell. Then you have to do double the work to create the value. So our position has been always stay close to the market. So the base uh, rate assumption was 3.78, but then we had a supplemental on top. And that was 7.7-ish. .7 so blended, it's almost to 5% where market is 5.6. So we're not that far out. Right? So when we sell, we'll be selling in that plus a little better rate. So whatever value we create, we're going to capture the value at exit. It's a 204 units, uh, 1974. We really like the average square footage because you know 800 to 1,000, it's a good one. You go above 1,000, it becomes a problematic because you cannot charge a higher dollar per square foot because in that unit, there's a max dollar amount. Uh, we bought that uh, almost $17 million. And we equity needed about six and a half million. Our, you know, it was $82,000 a door and 102 dollars a square foot. So if you come from single family, try to use that one person rule. Uh, that is your starting point. That applies in the multifamily as well, at least a version of it. Uh, so that way you can say whether it's a class A, B, or C kind of quickly plays out interestingly. Uh, we are IRR, we're 18%, multiple is 2X, and investment that we record is $50,000. In other way, all the investors came in to invest with us. It was, you know, you give us $50,000, then go to sleep, let us do the work, come back in five years, we'll give you a little over $100,000. So that's the, that's the game plan. Interesting part, the way we structured the deal, we did not need the whole $6.5 million to close the property. We needed right around four million dollars of four and a half or so 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 we when the deal came we took that opportunity investors came about and we did it so one thing happened that the deal was supposed to close in december we had the entirety of the body in there at the end of the year you have a depreciations needed so when you cut over to you know december to january there's always a slippage in the capital that's because uh, and at the end of the, like this time of the year, you should optimize your income taxes and find investments that you can deploy the capital to that not only gives you the return, but also gives you the write-offs, right? You need that. Uh, if you cannot use it, fine, bank it. And then if you can use it, fantastic, use it, right? So that's where that one was. And there was a loan assumption. Um, so Chase Bank pulled it a little bit this year. That's why we kind of went in and kind of closed it out. All right, so return that we expected, again, just to kind of recap, it was six and a half cap going in, six cap going out. We ran the sensitivity at a 6.2 as well, so it works out fine. 2.3x multiple, 18 to 20 RR, 70 third split, five years, first 7% goes to uh, the LP. So for us, when we do a return, uh, we always ask the question, how much of a breathing room we have into the deal? That means if I have to execute everything, that means I have to get the rent, 
uh, the day one. We have to get the occupancy, the highest point, the day one. Then I have to run the cost at a very lean and life is always perfect. Sky is always blue. And then I get 18%. That's a very risky thing to go. For us, we're going to stay here for five years. Roof is going to fall off. AC is going to go out. Door is going to get broken out. Somebody is going to say something. So there's a cost associated with it. We bake it in. And then we say, you know what, let's go to the journey. So in this project, we had quite a bit of room in terms of the project, uh, the rent side, and also quite a bit of room in terms of a vacancy and occupancy lever on it. So we had operation levers quite a bit. We had rent lever quite a bit. And so we felt comfortable as we kind of went in. Hence, the way we designed it was that the project should cash flow from very beginning. That's why even though it's a value add, it is very unlikely you'll get in a five, six percent cash first year. Then it kind of goes up for this project, five or six percent cash from year one. Then it goes up as you kind of go through. That's the way we kind of designed it. That's why we made the assumption. That's what we executed on December. And that's how we bought this property. So also, it, it, this one has a 72 percent uh, paper loss. So this is November and this is uh, Q3 of the year. Pay attention to your uh, total uh, taxable income, work on your AGI and see what's the best way you can do it. So that was the assumption that we made last year. And that's still the case, 40, you know, almost 40% you get it this year and then rest happens in, you know, the other way. So the beauty is this was from last year. And so, so we closed it this year, this year is 60%. Uh, then next year goes down to 40%. So our, Thoughts is keep that in your mind. You should bank as much of a depreciation as you can before the year goes out. All right. So, so we talked about our investment hypothesis, at least the return perspective. Let's let's talk about some of the details. So we got the big one, then we break it down and look at all the assets in about five different categories. First one is the location. Right? For us, San Antonio's fundamental changed quite a bit. And so San Antonio, it's like a Dallas goes out first, then Houston goes up. And then San Antonio kicks in. So the San Antonio had is five minutes and a big inrush of the increase of the price. You may have experienced that as you kind of went through. On the downside, when the cycle happened, from the uncontrollable taxes and insurance perspective, San Antonio had a quite a bit of gap. They caught up last year. So San Antonio was a very, a very good spot to catch up on the, on the uncontrollable from the taxes perspective. Insurance was at par, no issue. Houston had double the dosage, right? They had to catch up after two years. Dallas stayed a little bit of this. That's on the downside. On the upside, San Antonio is still growing. The Mexico-US relationship and the industrial phases, the first stoppage, that is still there. And Northeast uh, quadrant of San Antonio is one of the best quadrants. So we look at San Antonio on the Northeast quadrant, especially I-35. This one checks all the boxes. And on the far right, you could see like last year, we went in thinking San Antonio will be number eight. It's going to stay steady. This year, San Antonio came ahead of the number eight. So they're number one in the uh, total adult migration changes. Then we always take a look at seller. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can look at it. They have institutional sellers. They have retail sellers. In the retail sellers, they have flippers and they have true owners. Uh, so we pay attention to who are we buying it from. If I buy from a flipper who just came here to flip the thing and you go, you know they're going to do the very minimal work. They're going to run that thing at a cost basis. Everything will be, you know, a capital will be deferred. So you kind of sort of see it. And the way you approximate how long that they had it. Four years, three to four years is the danger zone. Once you hit that four, five, six years, you had it for a long time. This uh, this owner, she had it for eight years and she's the real estate domain. She sold this one and she's she consolidated quite a bit. Uh, and also we have seen this property almost a year and a half, a year before we bought it. So she started at 19, we started at 17. And then over time, we we and her and us, we, we marched. Uh, loan assumption, as I mentioned, four and a half percent blended. We loved it. Uh, well positioned for the rent location and the location and the and the foot traffic that we have is very awesome and proximity was well as well so what we saw in a sense our going in price was good our stabilized financing was good give us a lot of breathing room and that location doesn't have any good look in class c everything else there looks like a class c so our belief is that if you give a good place to live for the right tenants they will pay the premium in the location so that's our hypothesis as you went in and that was the uh, so that was the location. Uh, this is I thirty five corridor. Uh, so this is the Horizon apartment. It is get out from the freeway about two 
two or three minutes, right? They're like a second light. It's right here at the Nico. So uh, this is the gold field. And I, I mean, we'll talk about this street. There's heavy traffic here that you go and you can see all those big distribution centers. So location-wise, it's a C. It's going to will be a C, but it's a work true uh, on a workforce housing. And within the C category, you're going to have a good looking property where you got the pools, you got the amenities and lots of uh, kids there. So that's that's the thing. I mean, so that's the assumption that we made, right? So let's take a look at one, whenever we buy, we also look at some of the risks. We look at the rent risks, we look at the interest rate risk, we look at the downturn risk, liquidity, insurance, and express control. And we talk us out and put some mitigations around it. I'm not gonna talk much to it, but those are the five or six risks. We take a look at it. Depending on the city, one or two risks could be different. If it's the Houston area, we always look at the weather events, then we'll adjust the working capital. If it's San Antonio, if it's older, we'll say, hey, what if the downtown? What if my turn is a little bit longer? Do I have enough cash? Or the rate goes up. So then we put some mitigation around it so that we don't have much of exposure as we kind of go. So interest rate, downturn, exposure was low. Uh, the liquidity, we had some extra cash. Uh, insurance increase, it worked out really fine. Uh, then expense control and that this is where expense control was a big, really big thing for us and the sustainable rent. And you'll see how some of the risks will come back and we have to navigate through uh, when you know, we had to navigate through in the last seven months. All right, so what we do, we have the hypothesis, we have the investment requirements, that we have the risks. Then we take our P&L and take the quantify, uh, take those, uh, uh, all those numbers and we put that in, so we, we separate that out. Uh, we have a quantitative analysis and we have a qualitative analysis. What we say, uh, you know, that for us to hit a pro forma, we have to do something and whatever it is they have to do, it must follow a schedule and then you go. So this is the uh, framework that we use. We'll look at for, in 120 days, then year one, year two, and year three. Every year has a, uh, has a, has a strategic theme to it. Then we break it down you know, by the type of you know, action that we do. So when we came into this property, we knew a couple of things. One, she had it for eight years and, and, and she ran it by herself. No syndication, I believe. I believe that's the one she owned and she had another smaller one. So she ran it. It's, it's a big asset and it takes a lot to run an asset. Of course, when you have a class C, at some point you, you check out. So we're gonna find something. And then we walked around, we saw a lot of riffraffs, we saw some homelesses with a lot of trash. So we knew then there, it, it lacked a sense of community. And so coming in, we knew that first 120 days, whenever you take over, see it's a heavy handed uh, takeover. Uh, we have to do something very tactical work that sends a message to the community that, hey, here we are. Hey, we're doing something that shows that we're here to help you. So we have to do something bold. We have to do something that makes a statement and we have to really fast on execution knowing that there's gonna be a lot of problem that we're not gonna able to fix all the problems right away, but we're gonna be there side by side showing that we are actively working on it, right? That's where the, uh, the comes in and, and then we can, we can trade that out for income. Expenses, the same thing, reduce the admin expense and then the CapEx, first thing you do, the must have victory improvements. That's where the bold statement and everything that shows up. Then for the year one, it's the optimization of the revenue optimization of the expense and the CapEx, right? CapEx, we knew there's a quite a bit of work that we had to do. Uh, so we have enough budget as you go. And as you go through year one, year two, it's all about optimization and year three onwards, you start thinking about selling. And so that's what the cap rate alignment shows up. So always we, we have a time. And the way you should look at it is that what is my NOI target that I'm looking for? And once we get close to the NOI target, we start looking at, okay, can I place the property with another in a good hand so they can run with it? So let's go back to here. A part of the interesting part on a, a typical syndication you'll see is that you 1099 everything, right? We go and get a property management company and we ask the property management company, hey, how can you meet my PL? It's almost like I outsource, we outsource all of our strategic execution and uh, to a third party entity who doesn't really have incentive to help us out because um, that's a fee-based vendor, right? So what we believe you need to go a little bit further, which is you not only, you know, we have to be at a place where we understand the project, 
we're looking at the PNL at the same speed as they're looking at it, plus a little bit more. So there is no way we're going to go back blind and say, hey, that's my number. What can I do to hit it? A good asset manager, asset manager, right? We can manage the asset. That means that that team has been there. Should say, hey, this is my target. What is your plan? And if the plan doesn't meet the requirements, I have some stuff on my sleeves. Here you go. I'm going to help you. So that should, that should be the mindset, right? For this particular uh, asset, we interviewed five, four property management companies. Uh, some of the folks we worked before, some of the folks who didn't work before. Uh, all in all, we picked a company called UAG. They're out of San Antonio. Uh, 12,000 units based out of San Antonio. They do value at seas. Um, the PNL worked out. We said, hey, good, what it is. Now, misses was, they're big, a little bit extra big. They have too many layers, right? So they showed up. One of our requirements is we don't get into any asset where they don't have a local regional place. And to have a regional, they need to have about 400, 500 units. So if someone doesn't have a regional in a place, we don't go in. They're too small. And if they have too many regionals, they're too big. So we always take a look at it and how can we influence the leadership of the organization or how do we get a red carpet? So UAG, that's a start off with the for recommendation. This was the second or third assets, but we are new. So we thought we'll get some red carpet service, which we didn't. And I'll show you why. Uh, so that's that's how we started. So very you know, you know, logical thought process, but when the assumption doesn't work out, you got to be very proactive. So when we walk in, we always have two property management you know, uh, companies in place, A and a B. We always believe somebody's going to walk away. And if they walk away, we must be able to execute you know, very quickly. And that time is very important. So that's the setup, right? 